Session two is a composite of several sessions of Getting Ready for Writing Workshop and Writing Workshop that took place in the early part of the school year. Session two follows the same format as session one. This session highlights the major importance of the process of writing to early reading, especially in the first 18 months of learning to read. You will see how each child learns to write and read in his or her own way and time. I want you to be able to find a letter up here. And you can use that song to help you if you get in trouble, right? Okay, we want to find a Q. That's a tuppy. Okay, can you find a Q for us? Wow, you guys are so good, you don't even have to sing your song anymore. Remember how we, thank you. Remember how we used to have to sing, I mean, we'd say Q and you'd have to go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, and then you'd have to yell stop, right? Remember how we did that? Yeah. Okay, you're really doing well. Well, you know what? Now I wonder if you can write some of these letters. Sophia, I want you to make a Q. Can you make a Q? That's a hard one, isn't it? Q. First find it for us. Show us where it is, okay? Right there, yeah. Can you make that? That's kind of hard. Oh, she did a beautiful job. And you know what she did? I saw how she made her, thank you, Sophia. She made the circle. In fact, she made a better circle than I did, didn't she? Circle, circles and sticks. Remember we said the letters are all made of circles and sticks? Yeah, look at She made the circle and then she put a little stick on it. You are doing very well. Anytime you want to write a letter, it's real easy to use that song, isn't it? And find a letter and then you can just copy it. Many adults do not realize the tremendous challenge of mastering letter formation for young children. Therefore, alphabet time should not be discontinued until kindergarten teachers are sure every child can use the alphabet song as a strategy to find letters. Learning to master letter formation is a slow and gradual developmental process. For more information on developmental learning, See Chapter 1 for the seven conditions of learning language and how Writing Workshop employs Camborne's conditions. Also see Chapter 2 for letter formation is developmental and Chapter 3 for making ABC books and helping children become readers through writing. In this section, you will see how children learn to bridge the gap between simply hearing sounds in their spoken words, known as phonemic awareness, to connecting sounds to letters, known as the alphabetic principle, which opens the door to phonics. The connecting of sounds to approximated letters is commonly referred to as invented spelling. It is a major learning achievement in kindergarten and the beginning of early reading. See Chapter 2 for more information on spelling is developmental and what is invented spelling in helping children become readers through writing. Boys and girls, I was so impressed with your thinking caps the other day because you came out with some really good ideas of ways to hear sounds and connect to letters. And you did it all in your own. Remember how in the beginning of the year we had this song. This was helping you to learn to hear sounds. Remember how that went? Who has a name that starts with er? Who has a name that starts with er? Who has a name that starts with er? Please tell me now. Who has a name? And Reese. Ryan and Reese. We know that really well, don't we? Yes. Ryan and Reese. They're names that start with that rrr sound, right? And we've been doing that since the beginning of the year, and within about two weeks, all of you could hear those sounds. You could hear the song that I told you and match it. Since all these kindergartners can do sound matching, 
we have moved on to sound isolation, which is a little more difficult developmentally. Now, the children must isolate the beginning sound from a classmate's name. I, rather than my telling you the sound, you're going to tell me the sound. This one. Nathan has a name that starts with... Mm, very good. That's a hard one. Nathan has a name that starts with... Mm. Nathan has a name that starts with... Mm. Nathan is your name. And you'd say my name, wouldn't you? Nathan, you're the expert on your name, I know, because you know how to spell it, don't you? Yeah. I'm just wondering, now we heard that sound, mm, 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 but what letter would stand for that sound up here? Nathan, you call on somebody, because you're the expert. Then you see if they can find the right letter, okay? One, two, three. Yeah. Okay, we're looking for the mm, 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 the letter. <gasps> How did you know that, Sophia? How did you know that? Because. Because why? Do you remember how you know that? Because it's a nest. <gasps> she used the picture. Nest. Listen to that. Nest. Nest. That has that mm, mm sound there, right? What about the letter name? The name of the letter. N. Do you hear it in there too? N. Do you? N. Yeah, you do kind of at the end. So you could use the picture here. You could use the letter name to help you. And do you know how Nathan spells his name? Have you ever seen him write his name? Do you think you could write that? Would you want to try just writing that first letter of Nathan's name? Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, my gosh. She's even got the first two letters. Do you know the rest of the letters? You do? Well, you need a little more space, don't you? Here, I'm going to lift this up, and you can write it. What, can you get it in there? Do you want to start it here again? Here, do you want to start down here? Nice. Go ahead and just give it a try. When you're in writing workshop, just try it. If it isn't exactly right, that's okay. How old are you kids? Five. 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 Should I expect or should teachers expect you can spell things perfectly? No. no, no. But we want you to try. I want you to get those ideas down. They're so important. The main thing I want is that the letters, I can read them. You can make capital letters. You can make small letters. I just want to be able to read them, okay? Because you're only five. That's what I expect. Okay, she's doing a great job there. Sophia had difficulty representing the digraph TH in Nathan's name, which is to be expected at her age. When I conference with Sophia alone, I will explain digraphs to her, because her spelling has developed to the phonetic stage, so she is ready to understand. However, most of the class is not developmentally ready, so I simply tell them to keep trying and do the best they can with spelling. I'm going to give you a real hard one now. I don't know if you can handle this one. I had a, I had a dog whose name was Harry. <laughs> Harry. Yeah. Maybe you've heard about the book Harry the Dirty Dog. It's a really funny story. Uh, Harry. Okay, now. Harry has a name that starts with what? Oh, great. And that one helps a lot of times if you go, <sighs> can you feel the warm air on there? <sighs> yeah. Because it doesn't have a real strong sound. Harry has a name that starts with ha. Huh. Harry has a name that starts with ha. Huh. Harry has a name that starts with huh. Harry is your name. If my doggy were here, I would say your name. Okay, now Harry, what letter stands for that ha huh. in Harry? What do you think? Who? let's see. Um, yeah, Reese? Okay, you want to come here and find it? Now, Harry, H, does that letter name have that same sound in it all? No, it doesn't. Uh-uh. So that wouldn't help us there, would it? That wouldn't work. But it works most of the time, so it's good to use. Oh, what about a 
house, house. Does that start the same as hairy, hairy? Yeah, yeah. So that can help us, right, the picture? Yeah. And we don't have anybody in our room named Harry, do we? So that can't help us. Beautiful job. Okay. Okay, boys and girls, you're doing very well on this. When you are listening to the sounds, when you're trying to write words in writing workshop, listen to that sound, and then think about the letter, what letter would stand for that sound. You can use the picture. You can use the letter itself, the name of the letter. That might work. And you can think about other people who have names that start with that. And all of those can help you to go from that sound that you're hearing to writing a letter. Okay? All right, great. You're doing a wonderful job with that. Many children figure out these strategies of connecting sounds to letters on their own in the process of writing. Some children need to be taught. However, it is essential to remember before they can be expected to connect sounds to letters, children must be able to hear individual sounds in the words they wish to write. Once children can hear individual sounds in the words they wish to write, known as phonemic awareness, and can connect these sounds to the letters that stand for them, known as the alphabetic principle, getting ready for writing workshop becomes a place to teach the children spelling and phonics needs as observed in their process of writing. To learn when to teach digraphs, high-frequency words, and word families, see semiphonetic and phonetic stages of spelling in Chapter 2. To learn how to teach digraphs, high-frequency words, and word families, See the page suggestions in the Author and Subject Index for Digraphs and Appendix D for High Frequency Words and 37 Common Rhymes Within Word Families or Phonograms in Helping Children Become Readers Through Writing. We begin this session of Writing Workshop with a review of writing rules and a discussion of why writers want to write. Then we proceed to the teacher demonstration of writing and mini-lesson. Do you know, boys and girls, you're becoming really great writers. And you know what I like? I like the idea you have such interesting ideas to write about. Um, remember how very first we started with these writing rules? And uh, you wrote your name and your date on every page that you write. Remember that? And then you thought of an idea. And then you drew a picture. And then you wrote about it. And do you remember how you used to write a lot of you like this in the beginning of the school year? And then some of you wrote like that. And you know what? All of you are writing like this now. And it's only been about a month. You're doing really, really well. This is adult writing. We're using the regular letters of the ABC, aren't we? And you're writing like that. It's wonderful. You know, when you write like this, this is really hard work, isn't it? You have to think of those sounds, then you have to find a letter, then you have to write it down. You have to remember what you're writing. Ooh, that's hard work. Nobody would want to work that hard if you just wrote like that and then you just threw it in the ash can, would you? No. Why do you want to write like that? Because you want to be a really good writer. Yeah, and isn't it fun to sit in an author's chair over there and share your writings? Yeah. yeah. Then, remember we were talking about we're going to write a book now, and you're going to share this book. You can take it home. You can read it to your parents. You can read it to your brothers and sisters. And we're going to put it in the library right here in school. It's a special book, isn't it? This is worth all that work. This is a first grade book. Remember I said I couldn't get a kindergarten child to ever give me their books because they're so precious to them. This is what your book has to have so that we can publish it and make a book like this. This list for making a kindergarten book was decided upon by the children and myself in previous writing sessions. Using this list, I have taught several mini lessons on focus or being about one thing. Today's demonstration will be a quick review of a book I'm writing and will include a mini lesson about 
Point number two, drawing pictures to match the words. And you know, I've been writing about walking down on the dirt road and all the things I see. And remember I saw the um, curvy stick and what was that? Yeah, it was a snake. And then I saw, what's this, a helicopter. Yeah, do you remember what that helicopter was doing? Yeah, I took people to the hospital and from the hospital. And then I wrote some more, but I didn't have a picture at all. And Anna said to me, you need to have a picture of a helicopter in a, in a hospital. And so I did. And then Anna said, I just had the helicopter, remember, in the hospital? She said, you should put some people in there. So I did put some people in there. I put these two people in, and they're carrying this man that's on a cot. That's another good reason to have a, a helicopter, because you can put people who are sick, who can't sit up and lay down in their beds, you can put them right into the helicopter. So I wrote, the helicopter landed on the roof of the hospital nearby. It takes people from our small hospital to a bigger hospital. It is faster than a car. So now my picture does, my picture does match those words, doesn't it? Yeah, now it does. I think, do you like that, Anna? Is that better? You have wonderful, wonderful thoughts, boys and girls. And you know, that's what's so important. That's what's so precious. Like I said, I'm not so worried about getting perfect letters. That's not the point. I want readable letters. I want you to go to your seats now, go looking through your books. And if your pictures aren't matching the words on the pages in your book, you fix them up so they do, all right? Be sure that your pictures match the words. Since writing my book, I've gained a new appreciation for the engagement and learning value of making and publishing books by kindergartners. I would suggest making and publishing books as soon and as often as possible. Ask parents or older students for help in the mechanics of typing and assembling the books. Children are capable of writing a book to communicate their experiences and thoughts when they are in stage three, taking inventory of written language. To learn more about the five stages of written language in kindergarten, see chapter three. For learning more about making books, see page 201 for mini lessons on making a book in chapter six. Children learn to write and read in the process of writing about things that are meaningful to them. To gain a complete understanding of what writing process means, see Simplified Writing Process Guidelines for Kindergartners in Chapter 3 and all page suggestions under Process in the Author and Subject Index of Helping Children Become Readers Through Writing. When I conference with a child, I'm assessing the child's ability to communicate his or her message into readable print. I often repeat the child's message to keep him or her on track. I do not address the appropriateness of the child's letter choices unless there's difficulty in forming the letter. Hi, Autumn. I see you're writing on your story about Smokey. Can you read what you've written there for me? To play with Smokey. Mm -hmm. Autumn is blossoming as a writer, and she is able to read what she has written. It may surprise teachers, but children who can write readable print often experience difficulty reading it at first. However, they usually learn soon after. Writing like Autumn's with developmental approximated spelling is our best predictor of early reading success. Who is Smokey? My cat. He's your cat, yeah. And remember? I got another cat, too. You have another one? Her name's Ruby. Ruby. Okay, maybe that's something we want to add. Smokey's a boy. Yeah. And Ruby's a girl. Okay. And remember, I gave you this card because you said you really want to know how to spell Smokey. Have you written any other pages about Smokey? I rarely spell words for children, but in the case of a pet or another word precious to them, I do provide the spelling. Additionally, if I see a child misspelling a common high-frequency word, I will teach it in a mini-lesson and put it on a tent card. 
See pages 129 and 131 in Chapter 4 for the headings High Frequency Word Tent Cards and Building a Sight Word Vocabulary in Helping Children Become Readers Through Writing. Besides this one? Are there any others in your folder here about Smokey? Oh, there is one, yeah. What does that say? I, I named him Smokey because... Right, yeah. And you didn't quite get that finished, did you, the other day, because you ran out of time. Well, you know what? I want you to finish that right now, and I'm going to help you with that, because we'd like to make this into a book. You're getting, you're getting quite a few pages here. I think we can make a really nice book about Smokey. <laughs> Okay, you said, I named him Smokey because why? Why did you name him Smokey? Because why? Because he looked like smoke. He looked like, oh, that's wonderful. Can we write that here? Okay, you said, I named him Smokey because, and then you said, because what? He, what did you say? He, can you say it again for me? Because he was, because he was a uh, I named him Smokey because why? Why did you name him? Just he was tell me. He colored like smoke. He was colored like smoke. Oh, that's a wonderful thing. Let's just make some lines here so we remember what you said. He was colored. Whoa, like smoke. I'm gonna let you just write that, and I'll be back and check and see how you're doing. Okay. Our next conference is with Brian. Ryan has been a willing writer and a risk taker with spelling since the first day of school, and he understands that his writing must make sense. Okay, because then you told me here, is this the one where you said you got a bag of apples? Yeah. Or for who did you get the bag of apples? Grandma. Okay, can we write about that? Um, you can go back and work on the picture a little bit more, but can, well, I'm here right now. Can we write that? Mm. You told me, can you tell me again what you said about... Getting a bag of apples for Grandma. Can you tell me that? Um, it's the apple bag. Mm -hmm. You said that you got a, a bag. bag. So I, we're going to say I got, right? I. You can make a line. Mm -hmm. Remember you do that? Yeah. Oh, sometimes I make a line under it to help you with the word. Good. I see what you're doing. Yeah, oh, that's good thinking. Okay, you, tell me what you want to write first. You said you, you, mm. I, mm. what are you doing here? Yeah, I picked, picked, tell me the whole sentence, a, okay, I picked a bag for grandma and grandpa. Okay, now let's count those words, And right? put some apples in it. Okay, I oh. picked a bag for grandpa and grandma. Okay, let's just write that much. Here, I picked What do you hear? Oh my goodness. You don't even know the I in there. Picked. Anything else? All right. I picked, you said a bag. A. A. Bag and bag we can put right there. Picked a bag. Oh, wonderful. I picked a bag. Four. Four. And four. four. Do you hear and anything four. at the end? Anything at the end? Four. Yeah, I thought you'd hear that. Because that starts your name, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I picked a bag four, and then you said... My. My. Okay. And Grandpa. then you said Grandpa. Yeah, we changed this a little bit, but that's okay. Grandpa. Grandpa, anything else that you hear in there? Okay, I picked a bag for my grandpa and grandma. We're running out of room there. We might have to tape a little bit of paper on there. Most of Ryan's approximated letter choices have good reasoning behind them. A few have to do with his pronunciation. Pronunciation errors are addressed best during editing by simply saying, 
we say and write it this way. Should we do that? You can just tape a little paper right on the bottom there so then you have more room. Okay, I picked a bag for my grandpa. And grandma. And, okay, and you, are you reading and right now? Yeah, I'll spread about that. Yeah, up. yeah, that's fine. This is a rough copy, that's okay. And, oh, beautiful, and, and then you said grandma, right? Go, Rama. Good, good try. I picked a bag for my grandpa and grandma. And I. did you say anything else? Let's let's think about what we're gonna say first. What was what were you gonna say? I. I what? Picked. You already have that. I picked a bag for my gram and grandpa and. I and. You put, did you put something in there? App. I put, Bones. and I put, oh yeah, apples. I kind of run out of room there. Do you maybe want to put apples over here? No, I'm fine here. You think so? See? Oh, yeah, I guess you did. Okay, I picked a bag for my grandpa yeah. and grandma, and I... Put some apples put, in it. Oh, well, we have, a, and put apples. You got, and I put apples. Do you want to leave it like that? Or you want you, and I put apples. What else would you have to have to make sense? I picked a bag for my grandpa and grandma. Grandma and came I, yesterday let's night. Let's listen to what we're talking about here, though. Just let's finish this, okay? I picked a bag for my grandpa and grandma, and mm -hmm. I put okay. apples... Mm -hmm. In it. In it, yes, that makes sense. And then I can the it. Can we write the it too? In it. Great. You know something, Ryan? If you don't want to, you don't have to draw those lines. When I first did that for you, I thought it would help you. But you seem to be doing pretty well. I wonder if you even need to draw the lines. What do you think? For I, for I know that um, the words don't mix up. So do you, do you like to draw the line? Is that why you like to do that? Yeah, so okay. they don't get so they, mixed up. So the letters up. don't get mixed up and the words get... Fine. If that's something you want to do, that's great. Because I can read this and it's a really good story. Ryan has a good concept of word, but is having difficulty showing it. This is to be expected with kindergartners, because leaving spaces is a highly abstract procedure for young children to manage. So Ryan settles for placing dots between his words and drawing lines under them for now. During conferences, the only letters I help the children with are those they are trying to write and have difficulty forming. Although their letter choices might seem inappropriate, there is usually some good reason for the child's developmental or approximated spelling. To understand this better, read the semi-phonetic stage and the phonetic stage of developmental spelling in Chapter 2. Understanding the concept of word and showing it in print is extremely hard for emergent writer readers. The concept of word is a major part of the behavior concepts of print. Concepts of print is one of the four emergent behaviors that children must learn to interrelate in order to become early readers. To learn more about these four critical emergent behaviors, see Chapter 1 for stages of reading and emergent reading behaviors in helping children become readers through writing. 
All writers need listeners or readers of their work. These listeners should celebrate, praise, and help improve and extend young authors' writings. Teachers should model praising and asking questions that improve and extend authors' writings. Okay, boys and girls, Autumn wrote a wonderful story. And Autumn, can you tell us what's the one thing that your story's about? Me and Smokey. Okay, Smokey and her cat, yeah. And she has, uh, it's all about one thing, as we have over there, and she has pictures that match the words. And she has more than three pages. She's got about five here. She's going to tell you about her story right now. Okay, can you tell me about this first page? I yeah, like, like to play with Smokey. All right, she likes to play with Smokey. Does that picture go with her words? Yes. Yes, it does. How about this one? She says, I named him Smokey because... He, he named, she named him Smokey because... He was covered like smoke. Oh, I love that. You know, when she first talked to me and told me what she was going to write, she said colored. When I came back, she said... He was like smoke, and she didn't have that word colored in, and that's such a special word. It really, when you close your eyes, you can really see what, he's, what he looks like when you use a word like that. So I wanted her to put that in, and she did put it in then. So he's colored like smoke. And then, what did you say? Smokey, what's my, my blanket in his mouth. Yeah. Smokey puts my blanket in his mouth. And I asked her, why does he do that? And what did you say? Why, why does he want to do that? Because so he can get comfortable. So he can get comfortable. Isn't that a big word? Wow. So he can get comfortable. Okay, what do you like about her, her book? Can you sit down, Autumn, and just... What do you like about it? Tell us why. Remember, we want to know why. Encourage the audience to say why they like something. That is a good start to helping young authors become better writers. To learn how to make Authors' Chair more productive, see Authors' Chair Aim, Procedure, and Discussion in Chapter 5 of Helping Children Become Readers Through Writing. Okay, we have an author here, Ryan, and he's writing a book. Remember how we said the kindergarten book should be about one thing? And the picture should match the words, and it should have at least three pages. So let's see if his book does all those things. All right, can you tell us about this, Ryan? This is his first page. Me and my dad, I mean, can you mom. Can to the side here, sir? Me and my mom, and my dad, and my brother, Casey, we're going apple picking. Pick very nice boy. I like the way he points and reads those words too. Isn't that something? Okay, what about this page here? Um, it says, I, I picked. I picked a fig for, for my, my grandma and grandpa. Mm -hmm. And I, I put some apples in it. Okay, and look at this picture there. What does he have a picture of? Can you tell him what he's got a picture of? Can yeah. I call him somebody? Um, I like yeah, what is this a picture of here, Anna? Why do you like that? <coughs> mm -hmm. He's got a lot of apples on it, too. I like to put apples on apple trees. Mm -hmm. That's a nice picture of an apple tree. That sure goes with his words, doesn't it? And what about this one? Um, she had the mind. Dad picked the box and I put apples in it. Okay, and then his dad picked the box and he put apples in it. Do the, do the pictures go with the words yeah. here? Yeah, they yeah. do. Okay, what do you like about his story? What do you like about his story? Can some of you tell him what you like? And I want you to tell me why. Okay, we pick up somebody right <laughs> Miss w. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, um, I like it because he drew that 
Okay, he drew the apple tree. He certainly did, didn't he? Look at the apple tree there, the apple tree there. Oh, my goodness. Loaded with apples, too. Somebody else, why do you like it? And she likes your words. She likes how you drew the trees, and she likes how you drew the words. He certainly did do a good job. Yeah, and everything. Okay, somebody else, one more person. Why do you like it? Um. One more. I'm going to count to three. One, two. Amber. 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 <laughs> I can make something. That's all right. Ah, oh, that's okay. Well, I Amber. like how he drew um, the box with the Oh, that was interesting, wasn't it? Yeah, he said his dad picked a box, and boy, you sure can tell that's a box full of apples, can't you? It really because looks like it. Because it's big. Yeah, it is, and it's big, too. Okay, you know what I'm wondering? I'm wondering, is there anything more you'd like to know more about with this story? He went picking apples, didn't he? Then, he said, they had a bag, and they gave the bag to who, Ryan? Grandma and Grandpa. Mm-hmm. In a bag. And then they picked a box, right? What do you do with um, the apples? Before we can wash them, we go to Grandma's house. And I cleaned one out for my Grandpa to eat. So you eat them? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you go picking all these apples, and then um, you put them in the bag, in the boxes. And then you eat them, right? How do you eat them? You just eat them raw, like and take the apple and eat it like that? No. How do you eat them? You have to scrub it off in your shirt because um, there's stuff that keeps the bugs out. Okay, that's a very good point. You have to scrub the apples, make sure they're clean, and then you eat them, huh? Yeah, and make sure they're shiny. And make sure they're shiny. Would you like to... Make a fourth page, maybe, and, and tell us about that. you got three pages here, but, you know, I feel like it's kind of like missing an ending there. Like, what do you do with all these apples? Now, you just told me you scrub them and clean them, and then you ate them, right? Mm -hmm. Could you write a fourth page like that? You could. Do you want to? You're not sure. You think about that. But that would be something you could do this morning if you wanted to. And that would make a wonderful book, well, I think. Well, I don't know how. Oh, why don't you know how? Because, um, I've Can, got the... And you said that you scrub the apples, right? Mm -hmm. Can you show a picture of yourself scrubbing the apples? Yeah. Yeah, well, you could do that, couldn't you? And yeah. then you could just write about it, right? But I really can do a little bit because I don't know how to scrub the whole thing. Because you don't know what? Because I don't know how to spell the whole thing. You don't know how to, you don't, but what do we say about spelling the whole thing? Do you have to spell it? No. You just do the best you can, right? You didn't spell a lot of these words right either. But I can read them. They're good enough, and they're great for a kindergarten child. Just try your best. That's all I ask, okay? Try your best. Okay, let's give him a big hand. He did a great job. And he does have, it's about one thing, pictures match the words, three pages, very good story. I was surprised that Ryan was hesitant to write a fourth page because of spelling. He'd always been a willing writer and a risk taker with spelling. I think he may have become discouraged over the disparity he saw between his writing and an edited copy of his first page. However, after author's chair, his kindergarten teacher took Ryan aside and showed him how very close his developmental or approximated spelling was to the conventional spelling. She praised him for knowing so much at his young age, and he then willingly wrote a fourth page. Ryan provides us with a visual understanding of how creativity and thinking can be discouraged in a child when a skill like spelling becomes more important. As teachers, we must understand what is developmentally appropriate in literacy teaching to encourage children to develop their creative thinking. After all, isn't that what we want from education? A creative, thinking, literate person? End of the year progress report. Are the children writer readers?
The best predictor of reading ability in kindergarten is a child's ability to write with approximated or developmental spelling. Viewing the children's writing samples, say from weekly writing conferences, and seeing the children's test results and Clay's dictation test offer proof of the child's ability to write and read. All of the children seen in this video became early writer readers by the end of their kindergarten year. Their scores and Clay's dictation tests confirm this, as do their writing samples saved throughout the year. See Chapter 7, Assessment, Evaluation, and Reporting for more about assessment and evaluation of writing samples and Clay's dictation test. Summary We all know the pain and hardship that having difficulty with literacy can cause the child and society. What explanation can we give for the continuing difficulties experienced by so many children in learning to read and write? Are reading and writing more difficult than learning to talk? Don Holdaway, renowned literacy educator and author, asked these questions years ago, and his answer is as true today as it was then and will be tomorrow. All literacy is learned the same way. Children learn to talk by talking in conversations that are meaningful to them any way they can. They also need developmentally appropriate guidance from their caregivers to improve their language abilities. Developmentally appropriate guidance is based on Camborn's seven conditions of learning language. Children also learn to write and read by writing and reading written language that is meaningful to them any way they can. All they need is a time to write with teachers who guide them individually in their process of writing in developmentally appropriate ways, as is described in this video and my book, Helping Children Become Readers Through Writing. If handled in this way, all children can become writers and readers.